Enough, Henry. I, Skeletor, stand in your path. You're not Skeletor. Go away. I am Skeletor, damn you. I, I, I am. I will defeat you. Come on, skeletons. You are all Skeletor also. Look, shut up, all of you, and get out of here. You've been in this game too many times, and it's now time for you to be abolished. No, it's not. I'll jump on you. That'll sort everything out. You can't be the protagonist. I'll be the protagonist. It'll be the castle in your game about Creaking Skull. Everyone will buy it. More people will like it than Legends, at least. Oh, shut up about Legends. You always bring up Legends when we're debating these things. Oh, yeah, well, that's what it's all about. Anyway, Creaking Skull is unbearably easy for Henry. Largely because you can just stand miles back where he can't hit you and shoot him until he dies. So, marvelously marvelous it is, but uh, also kind of dull. So, um, a good demonstration of Henry's power will be seen in a minute when we actually manage to knock him out of doing one of his attacks. For he's going to do his jumping uh, jump shockwave thing, and then we will shoot him a few times and he won't even be able to get to his halitosis attack before we knock him back again. So, he's going to bugger off over there and go into his final stage. Soon we will be stealing his chicken brain again, but for now, more blasting is afoot. So yeah, we stand halfway across the arena and shoot him. This isn't really how a boss battle is meant to go. Damn right it's not. Come here, you little shit. Why can't I even hit you anymore? Oh, I'm getting too old for this kind of rubbish. Oh, there goes my noggin. I'm going to rest over here. Don't you dare add anything else into the chronology. Yes? Leave me alone. You're not taking my tactical soul. It's the wrong game. Okay, so we now do this scene again. As you can, yes, I'm fairly sure that's Snack's armor's head he's got on his shoulders there. The rest is definitely Reinhardt, including the fact that Reinhardt can't operate shoelaces. And yes, they drop the drawbridge again. Who keeps dropping this bridge anyway? Is it Malice? Is this what he does between levels? He just opens and closes the drawbridge at random? If it is, he's letting drafts in, and uh, the heating guys are going to want to be onto him about that, I'm sure. So, but he doesn't even know how to tie his own shoelaces. He's using medieval Velcro. What a prat. Come on, Henry, walk faster. I don't care if you're not wearing pants and your crogglies are frozen together. Come on, walk. So, across the drawbridge we go, and we'll find ourselves in Castle Wall, where we'll immediately transition because we died a lot. For this uh, is a really hard jump to make, because I'm sure you can already guess where the child has been hidden, and I think I probably mentioned it in Cornell's playthrough anyway. Yes, it's hidden on that tiny, inaccessible platform that we haven't even looked at yet. This time we're going to have to look at it. Now, the deaths are largely because not, not from so much from getting onto the platform itself, so much as either trying to get off it or trying to get back down here. In the end I decided I would go up the tower instead of down it, because going down the tower is buggering impossible due to that collapsing platform there, which is designed to be crossed backwards. Marvellous. So we've still got the old guillotine blades. This time that uh, rotating platform there actually has spawned, unlike the time we went through here as Cornell. And now let's take a look at our goal, our objective, hidden over here, badly, is Beth, the second child. So we've got to wait for this thing here to revolve, and then we can make the damn near impossible jump over to her. Once forth, she will almost shove us straight off the platform, and then we will defy logic, physics, and gravity in that order. Right, so that's Beth, not Beth. Right, we should go home and tell Mum and Dad we're safe. You know, I don't live with you, Beth. I'm called Beth. See? It's obvious. Right, so how do we defy gravity? Well, we leap over here, and then we... Good show, Henry! <laughs> Finding that invisible shelf. Now, I, there isn't an invisible platform there, which is why Henry immediately falls off when you pull yourself up. It's just a bit of edge detection fuckery, and the game will immediately get its revenge on you for that. Sadly, its revenge is not particularly good due to the lack of fatalness of these large, giant guillotine things. Maybe they're just big blocks and we can't see the width. It's invisible. It exists in another dimension. So we'll jump over here to avoid that question forevermore. And up the spiky stairs we go to blast this guy. Isn't it fun to actually have an enemy in this level? We can use our magnum on it. Marvelous. So, up here some more and we'll go and get some money. Now, uh, Renon is in Henry's game. The thing is, but you... Um, never really get a chance to fight uh, Renon because you don't get anywhere near where you would do it. So I'm not even sure there's any sort of prohibition in playing this in easy. Maybe um, it won't let, it won't save the children or something like that if you're playing it in easy. I don't know. Because if you're playing the game in easy, you get infinite money normally. But um, the catch to that is that the game ends in Castle Center because 
it hates you. And so I. So, we're going to blast this guy here, and then we are going to go down there and scum back up for a power up, just like we did before. And, just like we did before, it's going to transition. And then I'm going to show you the holy water, now that we have seen the not particularly impressive level 3 knife. We will see the up to the level 2 holy water, but the level 3 holy water looks the same anyway. So, we are going to steal this power up, and this guy here is going to be intolerant of our not wearing pants. Oh, shut up, you. You're like all of those other repressive Nazi people trying to steal my pants. You're not even wearing pants, see? They all succeeded before you. That's why I didn't put them back on. I see. So, we get the moon card there, and over here, as before, is the power-up, since we don't have to find the witch lever anymore, nor do we have to do anything with the witches, since all the portcullises were already open. And unlike in Castlevania 64, there doesn't appear to be any gold in that, so I guess that's already been stolen by Carrie and used in her dastardly quest to own everything that ran on hands. Alright, save our game at the White Jewel, and once again we'll have a transition when fighting the Cerberus dogs, because again, you've seen it all before, and it really doesn't matter. You'll just see how easily he can deal with the last one, because poor old Hell Cerberus just can't catch a break in this. Who keeps doing that? Why do they keep doing that? Who's even left to do that? How can I see through this completely dark slit in my helmet? These and other questions will not be answered in the following section. So, we are here again, and we are going to blast any of these dogs as a result of this. You get out of it. Now you get out of it. We're not going to get out of it. We're going to eat you, somehow. That wasn't particularly practical looking. Take that. Eat my holy water. Right, as a result of that, we've got the level 2 holy water, which is the unholy water that Charlie Vincent threw around. Which doesn't seem a particularly appropriate choice for a weapon for a uh, Holy Crusader, but never mind. Instead, out comes Hell Cerberus, who then gets blasted to bits. Well, that was completely worth the wait, wasn't it? Poor sub boss. He just can't catch a break. Okay, so we've got the purifying from over there. We are going to go over here and we're going to get the red jewel. And then we will go forward and we will see that the midnight secret is always open for Henry. Now, I get the idea of doors always being open, but, you know, always opening a secret, isn't that kind of defeating the point of it being a secret? I don't know. I'm sure you do, though. So, we're going to pick up this roast beef. We're going to have a look over here. We're going to be wrong, because that thing isn't there. It's over here, in fact, the additional gravestone. Is, uh, as you would probably expect, when we found that gravestone with the roast beef, yes, there's another one diagonally opposite it, as per the rules of platform game design. We'll pick up the Red Jewel S, and then we will shoot him, and we will examine this. I should probably be in there, shouldn't I? I wonder why I'm not. Maybe it's some sort of insurance scam. Yes, that's the truth of the matter. It wasn't uh, because he wanted to uh, turn everyone into vampires. It's just because he wanted to claim on the insurance. That is Hen that is Master Aldry's secret. His secret recipe. He also stole the Colonel's secret recipe, but we had to give that back in the end. Copyright purposes, don't you know? So, over here we go. We're going to slash at this. We're going to get a, yet another roast beef. And then we are going to save the game. And that will be it for this one. And you will join us again in Villa, which will be edited even more than this one. I've been Evil Tim. You shall all have a good and marvelous day. Goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye. Oh, yes. <laughs>